Today we are about to discuss the tribe of Dan, and especially in connection with the land of Denmark. Denmark and Danish is called, referred to as Danmark. Danmark. Mark means borderland or area. In other words, the area of of uh, Dan. We identify the Danish, the people of Denmark, with the Danes, with Dan, with descendants of Dan, the tribe of Israel. Dan was one of the twelve tribes of Israel. Dan was the son of Bilhah. Bilhah was the maidservant of Rachel, the wife of Yaakov. Yaakov was also known as Israel. Dan became one of the twelve tribes of Israel. Dan was uh, together with the, the twelve tribes of Israel when they were together in one country, and afterwards, when the ten tribes separated, when the ten tribes separated, the ten northern se tribes separated from Judah set up their own kingdom in the north. Dan went with them. Dan was part of them. There is a legend uh, saying that uh, Dan did not want to enter into conflict with Judah. Dan traditionally was always friendly uh, and uh, amicable towards Judah. Uh, that Dan did, did not want to enter into conflict with Judah. And he saw that the ten, the ten tribes who were doing this or about to do this, he left and went into exile of his own volition. This was before the other tribes were exiled. So we don't know how true this is. It's a legend, but it's interesting because it shows us something of an innate uh, pro-Jewish feeling that the tribe of Dan often had. And the tribe of Dan, in several instances, is seen to be, have been associated with Judah. Even Samson, the hero of, the hero of Dan, Samson came from Dan, and according to tradition, his mother was from Judah. And so too, the future Messiah who will come from Judah will be descendant of David. But his mother will be from Dan. So we have this connection, this uh, relationship. At all events, Dan was with the, te the ten tribes when they separated from Judah. He was taken away with the rest of the ten tribes, as exiled by the Assyrians in his consciousness of his ancestry. But uh, he stayed together, he remained physically, physically made more or less as one coherent body or several different groupings that later re -coalesced for some reason or other over the course of time and they converged and they went to Western Europe. The ten tribes are now to be found mainly amongst West European peoples or offshoots from them, people who come from them such as people in the USA, in South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. They all come from uh, peoples who settled primarily in Western Europe. And that is where the Lost Ten Tribes are. And Dan is part of them. We identify Dan with people who settled in Denmark. And also we find offshoots from Dan in Ireland. And in uh, what is now Devon and, and Cornwall in that area. And in southern Wales. And also uh, to some degree in Yorkshire or that area of northern England, and we don't say in those regions that they're all from Dan. We, we do believe that a good portion of the people in those areas are from the Ten Tribes, and that Dan may well be prominent amongst them. We have evidence that people from Dan did settle in those regions. Nevertheless, we identify Dan with, primarily with the people of Denmark, uh, it is to be noted that even before the exile of the Ten Tribes, before Dan went away with the others, Dan had already split up into different sections. The Book of Judges tells us how Dan had uh, settled around the area of now, what is now Tel Aviv, Jaffa. It's, even now it is referred to as Gush Dan, the block of Dan, all that area. And uh, you also have a famous bus company named after it, the Dan Bus Company, which services that area, the main area of Tel Aviv and Yafo in Israel. And uh, addition, uh, apart from that, we also told how Dan went, moved off and he went to the north and he conquered another city, a Canaanite city, and settled it and named after Dan their father. And this account is found in both the book of uh, Joshua and also in the book of Judges and it's usually assumed that the both accounts are talking about the same event with a, with a little a slight change of circumstances or a slight change of detail and the name's a little bit different concerning the, the people, the place that was conquered and renamed Dan. So it is, has been assumed uh, 
usually usually has been assumed that they, they are speaking of the same event. In our researches, we have come to the conclusion that they are talking about two different two different occasions altogether and two different locations. Dan moved to the north. He moved to the north on at least two separate occasions. He established two separate centers at the least, if not more. He also at some stage conquered uh, Cyprus, what is now Cyprus, which is known as Edena, or Land of the Dananu in the Syrian inscriptions. And the settlement of people from Dan in the area of Denmark may have emanated from, from these northern settlements. So that is another study, another subject that we uh, sh sh may look into at a different time. Also, it's interesting to note that uh, uh, Fish, Rabbi Fishel Ma'al, who wrote a study on the Lost Ten Tribes, about the Lost Ten Tribes, and he is of the opinion that the two sections of Dan, the one on the east coast by Jaffa and the one who went to the north, that they had different qualities, even though they were from the same tribe, different characteristics. So the, that is interesting and it's worth looking into and taking into consideration. At all events at present, we are concerned with establishing whether the Danes, the people of Dan, are from Denmark. Uh, we are, at all events at present, we are concerned with showing how the Israelites, the peop those descendants of the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel who settled in Denmark, or in Scandinavia in general and especially in Denmark, are to be associated with the tribe of Dan. That is what we are concerned with in this present talk. So we have a history, the earliest history of of the Danish. It was written by one of the, uh, someone who's also apparently Danish, is known as Saxo Grammaticus. So Saxo Grammaticus means someone who's learned, a scholar. It was written about 1240 CE, 1240 CE or AD, according to the Common Era. And he wrote a history of the uh, Danish people, and he says that now Dan and Angle, with whom the stock of the Danes begins, I'm quoting now, Dan and Angle, with whom the stock that is the tribe, the, the, the race of the Danes begin, were begotten of Humble, Humble gave birth, birth uh, to them, Humble, uh, begotten of Humble their father, Humble was their father, and they were the governors and not only the founders of our race. And he goes on, uh, but uh, that is what we need for the moment. He is saying that Dan and Angle were the forefathers. And Dan was the forefather of the Danes, and Angle was the forefather of the Angles. As he explains further on, the Angles originally lived or had a, a place of dwelling or sojourning to the south of Denmark and what is now uh, Jutland and northern uh, Germany and from there they joined the Scotland, the Saxons and the Angles and the Saxons conquered England. They're saying that these Angles were brothers to the Danish people and the name Angle as we have shown is actually uh, an alternate pronunciation for the Hebrew word Eagle, Eagle was also the Angles were known also referred to him by their neighbours as Eagles. It's another name. Eagle is another name for Angle. And Eagle in Hebrew means bull calf, the, like a, a calf, a bull calf. And a bull calf, that was a nickname for Ephraim. Bull calf is a nickname for Ephraim in the Bible. And it said, where it said, if you look it up, it says so in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 18. Where, where Ephraim is referred to as a bull calf, and Rashi, the famous uh, Jewish commentator, says especially that Eagle was a nickname, a uh, cognomen for Ephraim. And uh, Eagle in Hebrew, or some uh, dialects of Hebrew, could have been pronounced Angle, which is close to the word Angle, which is what the name. The Angles were called, and they were also called Eagle. That, that was, Eagle was an alternate name, or alternate way of pronouncing the name Angle, also in the north, and also in Hebrew. So this, uh, this is of interest. At all events, we see here that uh, the Angles and the Danes were brothers, they were the sons of Humble. 
the name humble, that is humility, humble from the word humility, he was the father of Dan and Eagle, and he may, this may connect us to Jacob, Jacob, Jacob is also known as Israel, he was the father of Dan, and of Joseph, the wife of of Jacob was Rachel, his chief wife, and her maidservant was Bilhah, and Bilhah gave uh, birth to Dan and to, to Naphtali. So there's an association with, between uh, Joseph, that is Ephraim, and Dan, because the mother of Joseph, Rachel, was the was the, was the uh, lady, was the lady of the maidservant Bilhah, from whom Dan was begotten. At all events, humble, the word humble could relate to the name Yaakov because Yaakov, the name Yaakov in Hebrew comes from the word Akath, meaning, meaning heel, the heel of the foot, the lowest part of the body, and it cannot humility. So humble could easily have become a nickname, another name for Yaakov. But Saxo Grammaticus didn't know this. He only knew that the name humble has been, had been given to the father of Dan. So this is uh, an indication that the Dan spoken of, the Dan, who was the forefather of the Danish people, was in effect the, the son of Jacob. So it is referring to Dan of Jacob, of the Israelite tribe. And it could be, be we find this name Dan repeated amongst the offspring of Dan, as we shall see, quite often, and it, it could be that later... Other kings and leaders of the Danes also called themselves Dan, or were known as Dan, or Dan the Great, or some other, some other title. And uh, in the course of time, the, the images of these other heroes known as Dan conflated with the, uh, the previous known or recognized ancestor. At all events, this is a basis we can assume that Dan referred to. Dan is the son of Jacob, and he, he was the Dan from whom the Danes received their name Dan. We also have an, an earlier source known as the Vitus Chronicon Holster Die, quoted by uh, Sharon Turner in the late 1700s, 1800, early 1800s, who's a famous historian, and he quoted this source. Where it says expressly that the Danes, the Jutes, and Angles and Saxons were all from the lost ten tribes of Israel. They were Israelites from the lost ten tribes of Israel. And uh, so this too is a source worth noting. Another early source in the 1100s said that a mythical King Dan gave his name to the Danes. So we have, uh, that's, uh, we have something to go on here. We have uh, sources that say that the Danes were from lost tribes of Israel. And not only that, not only that, that they were from the tribe of Dan, the patriarch Dan, who was one of the heads of the ten tribes. Uh, we should note that it had actually been prophesied that Dan would emerge or spring forth from Scandinavia. Prophesied or indicated or could be indicated. It's a source. This is a, this is a, a source worth noting, worth taking notice of. In Deuteronomy, the blessing of Moses to the tribe of Dan says, "Dan, and of Dan, Deuteronomy thirty-three twenty-two, and of Dan he said, Dan is a lion's whelp, the son of a lion. He shall leap from Bashan. He shall go spring forth from Bashan." And so, as we said, we had the two sections of Dan. One was uh, two sections of Dan. One was for Joppa in the south. One was in the southwest of Israel by the present-day city of Tel Aviv. And the other one was in the north, in the northern Galilee, or for, even further north. At all events, the, both in the northern Galilee, that it adjoins the area of Bashan, which was actually to the, more to the northeast, uh, beyond the Jordan. Or it could be um, further to the north in southeast Turkey where we find a settlement of people from Dan, as we have explained elsewhere, and they still adjoined Bashan. Bashan, in effect, was the area of Syria, but the, the area of Syria beyond the Jordan River, to the east of the Jordan River. That was known as Bashan. It is also referred to in Aramaic as Bathan, the T sound 
sound interchanges with the Shah in Aramaic and uh, Hebrew, and so but in he, in, it was known as Bathan, Ptolemy uh, uh, describes it, mentions it as Bathanai, or the kingdom of Bathanai, and it was there. Uh, we also have uh, Bathan, the region of Bathan, referred to Mesopotamian, that is Babylonian, early Babylonian, or Assyrian manuscripts. So it is referred to as Basil. The, the people are referred to it as Basil. Basil was the name given to Bathan, to, to Bashan. And Bashan was the area from where hence the tribe of Dan was destined to spring forth. And we find this name, or similar name, used for Scandinavia. Pliny, a Roman geographer, an early Roman ge geographer, says that, says that Scandinavia had been known as Basilia. He also said another name would have been Scandinavia. Uh, Scandinavia became Scandinavia. That is where the name Sc uh, Scandinavia comes from, uh, a permutation of uh, Scandinavia. Scandinavia literally could mean land of the cis, and amongst the cis we find a group, an important group known as the Royal Sith, who also are known as Basiloi, and we relate them too to descendants of lost in tribes of Israel, and we have uh, proofs of this. Amongst other proofs that we have, we know that they worshipped a, a figure that was based on, on Joseph, the forefather, and, and so this indicates that they were from the lost tribes of Israel, uh, Along with other, other, along with additional evidence, at all events, at all events, Scandinavia was known as Basilia. Basilia is, an, is similar to Basil, is the same as Basil. Basil is another name of Bashan. It had been by Moses had been prophesied that Dan would spring forth from Bashan, and uh, this could apply to Scandinavia, where hence the, the Danes came or emerged. Also in this same verse, we have Dan uh, compared to a lion leaping forth from Bashan, and uh, the the, the uh, traditional the coat of arms, the traditional symbol of Dan, depicts three lions. So we have a lion as as a symbol of the Danes, and also a symbol of Dan. Dan was also uh, compared to a serpent, a snake. It's in Genesis 49.16, Dan shall be a serpent by the way, and adder in the path, in, in the English translation, and uh, a snake in Hebrew, uh, in Hebrew mythology, or in Hebrew terminology, could also refer to a dragon, and uh, the, the Vikings who came from Denmark, as well as from Norway, they often had at the front and the forefront of their, of their ships a carved image of a dragon in the in the throw point of their longships. A characteristic of Dan, of the tribe of Dan, was that they would name places after Dan their father. It says in Joshua 19, and the board of the children of Dan went beyond this, because the children of Dan went up to fight against Lesham and took it, and they struck it with the edge of the sword, took possession of it, and dwelt in it. And they called Lesham Dan after the naming of Dan their father. They called Lesham the place that they conquered Dan after the name of Dan their father. Also, when they went up in Judges 18 and 12, it says, and they went up and encamped in Kirit Yearim in Judah. Therefore they call that place Mahanadan, camp of Dan, that is camp of Dan to this day. When they camped in a place, it was named as Dan after them. And Judges 18, verse 29, they are also told that they, of another city or the same city, depending on what uh, explanation one accepts, uh, say, at all events, they said they call the name of the city Dan after the name of Dan, their father was born to Esau. So we have this, we have this uh, quality of the people of Dan naming places Dan after the, their father when they moved along in different areas. Also it says, Dan shall be a serpent by the way and that in the path in Genesis 49 and 16, which we quoted comparing Dan to a serpent. Uh, when you see a serpent in, in, in a dust path in the, uh, when a, 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 a snake, a snake slithers over a dusty path, you can see its tracks. You can see the tracks where the, where the snake has been. So too, where the Danes went, they named places after Dan their father, 
and you can trace them. You can, according to their names, you can see where they have been or where they went, according to the names of their father that they left behind on their way to the places they were going to. We had the, the camp of Dan, the Judges 1812. We also had Dan by Joppa. We had Dan in the Galilee. We had Dan in, in southeast Turkey. The Dan Oil conquered Greece. The Yad Nana, the, the, the Isle of Dan, which was known given to Cyprus. We had the Don River, the Danaista River, all based on Dan. Danasta, as it's called. The Danapa, Danaipa, the Danube. We have the tribe of Dana in Ireland, also descended from Dana, according to their own legends, or, or, or the correct interpretation of them. We also have Danonia in Devon, and uh, the people of Don in southern uh, Wales. All of these people are descended from Dan with using this name, Dan. Dan uh, leaves the trail behind him. Also, we have the king of the Danim in southeast Turkey, of the Dananu. They refer to themselves as Dan. That is the name they gave themselves. We have Denmark, the Denmark and, the, and the, the Danes, who they themselves say they're named after Dan, their father. Also, we have the Viking area of England, known as the Danelaw. That is the rulership of Dan. And we have the Danes, who call themselves after Dan, their father. So all these indications are indicative of Dan having been in Denmark. We also have the location of Dan in the north. When uh, We have shown elsewhere that uh, the configuration of the tribes relative to each other when they camped around the tabernacle, uh, when the Israelites came out of Egypt and they passed through the wilderness, they, they took they built a tabernacle, bits Alel from Judah, and uh, was associate was assisted by Aholia from the tribe of Dan. He was assisted by someone from Dan. They together built the tabernacle, and then the Israelites camped around the tabernacle. And the configuration of the tribes around the tabernacle was similar to their later uh, positioning of the tribes relative to one to another. Uh, we, we in the in the north we had the configuration of Dan together with Naphtali and Asher. And so too, we find these same tribes later located in uh, Scandinavia. And so this too fits Dan, being in that region. We also have the prophetess uh, Deborah, Deborah in the book of Judges. And she says, why did Dan dwell in ships? Why did Dan sojourn in ships? What is Dan doing in ships? Uh, sailing around in ships when he should be with us fighting she was inferring but nevertheless it shows that Dan was associated with ships see Judges 6 7 we also find Dan people from the Israelites from Dan from in the city of Tyre in the city of Tyre the Phoenician major city of Tyre where in the, in the, and we have a day night settled there as it says in 1 Kings seven thirteen. So this too shows an association of Dan with ships or with an area of maritime enterprise. And uh, that this together with the, the expo, ex, with this together with the protest of Deborah shows that Dan was a seagoing entity. Prophet Ezekiel in 27:19, he speaks of Dan, of Dan, ships from Dan and from Yavan, that is Greece moving to and fro and trading with Tyre. As we sh as uh, correctly interpreted, this verse in tw Ezekiel 27, 19 says from the original Hebrew, says Dan and Yavan, that is Dan and Greece, traveling to and fro, they were your subcontracting intermediaries. That is, they, they worked with the Phoenicians in Tyre. They were intermediaries with them. And they sailed around and they brought you manufactured iron alloyed and tin and in bars. And they were amongst your guarantors. In other words, they were financially and um, connected with the Phoenician city of Tyre and worked with them. Incidentally, the modern Israeli naval historian who wrote books on, on the ships and on the sea, and on seafaring, Savi Herman, he noted that the Viking longship was identical according in its profile, in its major features, to the ship that was, that was used by the Phoenicians in their sailing enterprises. 
the Danes of Denmark have always been, have always been a maritime nation. They've always been, they had a navy, they always sailed, and they've been famous for their sailing exploits. So to the Vikings, and now uh, new findings are uh, giving us evidence that the Vikings, the people from Dan, from Denmark, or from uh, uh, from or from Norway, from Viking areas, probably settled in North America or, or attempted to do so. So they got around, they moved around. So this was also a characteristic of Dan, of the tribe of Dan. We also have what we call Ephraimite criteria. Ephraimite criteria, they do not necessarily identify the Danes especially with Dan, the tribe of Dan, but they do enable us to be sure that the Danes, or a good portion of the Danish people, are from a tribe of Israel. And these Ephraimite criteria, are, they are criteria, they are qualifying signs or uh, points, one could say, that we use to, to show that a certain people are from the tribe of Israel or are not, or they are to a certain, to a significant degree from Israelites. Because it happens when we trace history, when we look around, we find that the Israelites have moved around, they moved from one place to another, they traveled until eventually settling down. And it could be that when they moved around, they left behind them people. Uh, and it could be that they live behind uh, them a good number of people or hardly any. It's hard to say. So how can we say that one area where they moved, where they were at one stage, belongs to the Israelites, and the other area where they eventually settled was not? Because sometimes both areas were. So we have these criteria, these criteria that we apply, and uh, we have found that they work, that they are valid, that they do give us valid answers. And by the, through these criteria... We are unable to determine to a reasonable degree of certainty whether a certain nation or group of people are descended from Israel or are not. And we apply this criteria to the people of Dan, the people, the Danes in Denmark, and we come up with positive results. So just to go through them very quickly, the criteria says the blessings, that they, they should have the blessings that were promised to the tribes of Israel, the physical and economical blessings should uh, have come to them. And so Dan, the uh, people of Denmark on the whole have been blessed. They've usually had a relatively high standard of life or reasonable standard of life. They're re reasonably uh, productive, fertile, healthy, uh, free, liberated and materially benefited by, by the Almighty through nature, through situation, and so on. So Dan fits this. We also have the indications of Scripture. We saw that there are indications of Scripture that do definitely identify this whole region with the lost tribes of Israel, this whole region, the borderland areas of Western Europe, the isles and the peninsulas and the coastlands of Western Europe. There are biblical verses that indicate the lost and tribes will be in that region. So it fits that. We also have the archaeological evidence, archaeological and related proofs. So we have the dolmens. Dan has Denmark has uh, six thousand or more dolmens in its region. It has one of the most prolific areas in the world for dolmens, and we have shown that dolmens are a sign of Israelite migration. Uh, and the, the prophet Jeremiah speaks of this. We also have. And there are other there are other indications from archaeology and history in general that relate the people of Denmark to descendants of lost tribes of Israel. We also have a Judah affinity with the Judah, a relative lack of anti Semitism, and the Danes of Denmark have that, despite exceptions, despite exceptions and the people who hate Jews amongst them who have been not been friendly towards the Jews on the whole. They have had a certain affinity with Jews. And in World War II, the people of Denmark helped save their Jewish inhabitants by sending all of them across the sea into Sweden and asking for Sweden to take care of them, to, to, to take care of its Jewish citizens until the end of the war. And that is what Sweden did. We also have other other attributes, originality, intellect, innovation, bravery, multi-prowess, empathy, doing of social justice, 
all of these uh, points are to be found amongst the Danish people. We have uh, Israelite self-identification, that the groups or some type of uh, traditions identify them with Israel. So we have this. It might not be uh, very great, but it exists. And we have a family connection that the Danes are related to the people of England, they are related to the people of Holland, they are related to other groups for whom we have additional evidence confirming that they are of Israelite descent. And since these, their brothers, their brother nations, the people they are related to, are proven to be, to be um, descendants of Israel, so too must they be, since they are from the same family. And since they are, they reinforce the uh, identification of the others. Uh, so these are all different points that need to be taken together and seen as a whole because the whole picture is what counts, not necessarily one specific detail of it. And also the tribal affiliation, that we can show that they are from the tribe of Dan. We can give them a tribal affiliation. Uh, based on uh, many different signs. Now, additional evidence. We also have uh, rabbinical commentators who describe the characteristics of Dan as a tribe based on biblical passages, based on tra several different traditions. And these characteristics, in part, they are similar to descriptions of the national character of the people in Denmark. So this is not an absolute proof, but it's a, it is indicative taken together with other proofs that is something that is worth it. So there we have it. The Danes of Denmark are descended from Dan. There are different traditions saying that Dan from Dan will arise a leader in the end times and he will help bring, bring forward the, the Messianic age. He will assist the Messiah Ben Yosef oh, and, he will, uh, and uh, this will bring about the reunification of the ten tribes with Judah. Together they will come become one people and they will return and resettle and re-establish the land of Israel and rebuild the temple. We don't know how these things will come about, but that is what is prophesied and it's worth knowing who the ten tribes are and which tribes they belong to, adhere to. And if you come from those areas, it is worth your while to look into this and to try and determine which tribe you may or may not belong to is not easy, but it's worth doing. It adds a good deal of interest and value to your appreciation of, of, uh, of Scripture. And we may say that on the whole, the majority of Israelites from Denmark pertain to Dan. There were also others amongst them, were people from Judah, people from Ephraim, as we have shown in our writings, also in those areas. But the tribe of Dan appears to have been the major entity in that region. The neighboring areas such as uh, Norway probably pertain to other tribes such as Naphtali or Ashur or Gad in Sweden. And uh, all of these different uh, identifications come together and they are parts of a puzzle that uh, each portion supplementing the other, interweaving with the other, intertwined with the other, and confirming the other. And so this is what we have. May the Lord God of Israel bless you, look after you, and look after all of us and all of the people of Israel and of Judah. Thank you.